Hey guys, welcome to my new AFK Melee Training Guide. And this is going to be a start of a new series where I will be doing AFK Training Guides for all of these skills. So today we are going to be starting off with Melee. And on screen now I'm going to show you an overview of all the methods that I will be showing you. As well as the timestamps, the level, and the XP per hour. So definitely feel free to jump to whatever section you guys are looking at. And don't forget to subscribe for my future AFK training guides that I will be posting. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the AFK action bar. So I'll be using this action bar for pretty much all of these methods, maybe a few minor changes that I will be mentioning. And so the key part about these AFK action bars is that you want all your area effect abilities in the first six or eight slots. So as you can see, I have Meteor Strike, which is an area effect ability. Then I have Sacrifice, which isn't, but it will heal me some. And then it's Cleave, Hurricane, Quake, and Smash. And then those are all of my area effect abilities. So you'll pretty much just want them all at the front. It doesn't really matter what order I wouldn't say um, but uh, that is generally what you should have and you can definitely copy mine if you don't already have an action bar that looks somewhat like this. So the first method we are going to be looking at is rock crabs for level 1 to 40. So rock crabs are located in the northern part of the Fremenic province and there are no requirements for this method. So the nice part about rock crabs are that they only have one defense, meaning that you should be able to get some pretty consistent hits on the rock crabs. And rock crabs give 232 combat XP every kill, and you should be able to kill around 200 to 250 rock crabs per hour, totaling a nice 50k XP per hour. And this is for lower level players. So when you go to rock crabs, you pretty much just want to wear your best gear. So if you're level 1 to 40, just wear the best gear you guys can wear. And the same goes for the weapon. There isn't really too much to say about this method because it is only for lower level players, and it's pretty simple. But another really appealing thing about rock crabs is that they are all aggressive. Um, so pretty much you'll just want to walk up to the, the rocks. They pretty much just look like rocks, and they'll pop up and start attacking you. And then pretty much you'll be able to automatically attack them every time they spawn. And then, as I said, you will just need to teleport to the Taverly Lodestone and come back so that they will become aggressive again. And this happens every 10 minutes. This next method is going to be primarily for level 40 to 70 players. And it is going to be training at the Bandit Camp. So the Bandit Cap is actually a really AFK method, and I did this when I was a mid to low level player. Um, so pretty much what you will want to do, if you are more of a lower level player, so let's say um, level 70 stats, and that's it, you will definitely want to wear full Guthans for the healing ability. And then just wear a holy amulet so that the bandits will be aggressive to you. So as you can see, Guthans is extremely important for this method. Um, it will be able to heal you a lot of health and make this method extremely AFK. And it is because of its ability infestation. If you use a Meteor Strike ability, which is the ultimate ability, um, it should heal you around three to 4,000 health if you have a bunch of bandits around you. Um, another alternative you can use is the Ceridomian God Sword, which is what I am using. And then just have your action bar set to revolution have the special attack first in slot because the special attack will allow you to heal every time you use it and this alone should keep you at pretty much full health you can bring some food just for emergency situations but you should be pretty good with just the god sword um, and then you should bring some bad armor probably an armor that doesn't degrade i just have some elder rune here just because i'm looking to get rid of it um, uh, but also with the Ceridium and God Sword, you do not need to bring the Holy Necklace. And this is because for the bandits to be aggressive, 
you only need one piece of a God Affinity equipment, so Sayer Doman, Bandos, Armadilly, stuff like that. You just need one equipment, even arrows will work. Now, I did say this method was for level 40 to 70 players, um, but it really does get good once you hit level 70. Um, so if you are uh, below level 70 and are looking to do this method, you will need to bring some food. Um, Soul Split, of course, would help if you do happen to have that, although you probably don't. But level 40 to 70 players can still do this method. Um, it is a little bit more difficult. You will need some food. Um, but the best way to actually heal is bringing a shield and using Rejuvenate every time you can because this will really heal you up to pretty much full health, although it is a little bit less AFK. And moving on to the next method, we have Hellhounds. And this is primarily for level 60 to 80 players. And Hellhounds are also aggressive, which makes this method fairly AFK. Um, another night. Nice neat fact about Hellhounds is that they are a good source of hard clue scrolls, so you should be able to get quite a few of them while doing this method. So starting with the method, we will want to go to the Taverly dungeon, um, and then you'll go to the Hellhounds part of that. And really for this method, you will just want to find a spot with a few Hellhounds that will be surrounding you so that they will all attack you and you can just do your area effect abilities on them. And so Hellhounds are aggressive for 10 minutes in total and then they will stop being aggressive. So after every 10 minutes you will just want to teleport back to Taverly and then enter the dungeon again uh, for another 10 minutes and allow the Hellhounds to continue attacking you. Um, so really you'll be doing this in intervals of 10. Now, if you do have a level 60 Dungeoneering, you can enter the Resource Dungeon. There is a better spot to kill Hellhounds in there. So, having 60 Dungeoneering will boost your XP per hour for this method. Um, and that is pretty much just because the Hellhounds are all gathered in a bunch down here. As you can see, if you go over here, there's like 5 or 6 Hellhounds that will be automatically attacking you and then you can just do your area effect abilities like always and you'll get some pretty good XP per hour in here. And another really cool part about the resource dungeon is that the Hellhounds will become aggressive to you if you just enter and then come back so this will save you from having to teleport to Taverly and coming back so that will save you some pretty good time. Um, but if you don't have the resource dungeon there is also a ladder in the Taverly dungeon that should be pretty close to there so you could check that out um, and that will make the uh, Hellhounds aggressive to you once you enter the dungeon again as well. This next method is definitely one of the best and it is Abyssal Training and you can do this from level 70 to 99 up to 120. Um, you could possibly do it if you are a lower level um, below 70 um, but 70 is just a good solid guideline. So to do this, you want to enter the abyss by teleporting with the Mage of Samarok. And you can go to both of these two spots. They're both pretty good. So there's the east and the west spot. And then you will have a bunch of these abyssal creatures uh, attacking you. And using your area effect abilities, you will deal some pretty massive damage on them all and you'll gain some pretty amazing XP per hour. So doing this method, you can actually make about 500 to 600k XP per hour, which is pretty insane. Um, and again, you just need to have your AFK action bar that I mentioned in the beginning of the uh, video. Um, so have all of your area effect abilities, and then you can pretty much just camp here and simply collect your 500 to 600k XP per hour. But looking at the setup to maximize this, you will want to bring some pretty decent armor, um, but definitely not expensive armor. So a nice option would probably be Bandos as it doesn't degrade. And then you should be bringing a two-hand weapon. So as you can see, I have a Ceridomian God Sword, and it does work pretty well. I'm actually not getting hit at all, really. Um, and if you do bring a Ceridomian Godsword, you can use the special attack, which will heal you a little bit. 
Um, so this will make it a little bit more AFK. Um, and if you do have Soul Split, so that would require 92 Prayer and Curses, that would make this method really great and extremely AFK if you do have that. Um, so if you do, you should bring some Prayer Potions and you can use it every time your health gets fairly low. Although I haven't really experienced it um, going too low. Uh, when I was doing it, it really stayed above 10,000 for the most part. Um, these Abyssal creatures really don't do that much damage. Even though there is a lot of them, you should be pretty safe while doing this method. And also, if you are using a Blood Amulet of Fury, this will really help, as this does heal you passively over a little bit of time. So this last method that I'm going to be showing you guys is Killing Abyssal Demons. And for a guideline, I put you should be level 80 to 99 um, for this method. So, Killing Abyssal Demons does have a little bit of complexity to it. Um, first, it does have a requirement of 85 Slayer, so that is a fairly higher requirement, although it is a really great method for training combat. Um, so, for your whole setup, you will want to bring some Aggression Potions, um, if you have overloads, you should bring those, and you'll need a lot of prayer potions and a few prayer renewals. And unlike these other methods that I have showed you guys, Abyssal Demons can make you some pretty good money per hour. Um, so you, for this, you should bring your Spring Cleaner. Uh, you should also bring your Gem Bag, as they do drop a lot of gems as well. Um, but there are a lot of noted items. So now to set this up, you will want to go to the Slayer Tower, which is in Mauritania. And you will want to go to the top floor, the very, very top floor above the Abyssal Demons. Um, this is the best spot to actually do this method. So once you are here, you will want to drink the Aggression Potion. And then you will begin killing the Abyssal Demons. Um, for your health, your health should stay pretty high, although it will go down very fast if you are not hitting them. Soul Split is a necessity for this method, so that would require 92 Prayer and Curses to be unlocked. So this method does have some higher requirements than the other ones that I have mentioned, but it is also the best. And this is because you can get around 500 to 600,000 XP per hour, which is just like the Abyss training. Although with Abyssal Demons, you actually do make around 2 mil GP per hour profit. So that is a really nice added bonus about this method. And so looking at the gear that you should bring, you should bring some pretty decent gear. Um, I have Torva right now. But uh, it does work really well with Bandos as well. I did try it with Bandos, and you really should be fine with just using Bandos. Um, another really key part is having a really high two-handed weapon. So a Noctis Scythe is the best weapon you can bring here. You really should try to have a Noctis Scythe. But if not, you can use a Dragon Rider Lance. This will work almost as well. And so every time you will be killing the Abyssal Demons, they will be dropping loot around you, and you should have area loot so that you can collect it all in one click. And anyway, that is all I'm going to be talking about in this video. But if you guys are looking for some more information on this method, I do have a full Abyssal Demon guide, um, which should help a lot. And I will be linking that in the description down below. I also have a loot video from 10 hours at Abyssal Demons if you guys want to see that and that will be in the description as well. Anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy the video and hit that thumbs up if you did enjoy and you found it helpful. And also subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. As I said earlier, I will be posting more of these kind of videos in the future, so definitely check out those. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.